بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال رب الشرع صدري ويسلي أمري وعالوا أبتتم من لساني يفرغ In the name of Allah the most beneficial Today is my lecture on stress and strains in flexible treatment So before we move on this and strain flexible pavement let's, let's define the basics let's recapture what you know about stress stress is force per unit area the load per unit area these units are mega pascal pound per square inch and kilo pound per square inch can be of a uh, different type it can be a bearing stress it can be shearing stress and it can be an axial stress when we talk about strain the strain is the change in length per unit length and it's a dimensionless this uh, entity the another word we we'll use is the stiffness or we call a young modulus it is the ratio between stress and strain and this what we are talking here is about a one dimensional strain this is talking about one dimensional stress so if you are talking about an elastic material it's a modulus of elasticity or elastic modulus or the modulus whatever we say so another terminology you are going to learn is they no let's define this stress and strain for example if a material is subjected to load continuous load or compressive load as you can see the point where stress is proportional to strain directly proportion or the linear part of this area is called elastic range and then it comes to other ranges such as uh, elastic they get the plastic plastic range and this is the ultimate point of the material when it gets broken as you can see another terminology is the poisson ratio this i mean if i compress the material in this unidirectional there will or you can see if you are talking about 2d material uh, uh 2d analysis it means if you are pushing it compressing it in y direction there will be always there also be a change that take place in the x direction so what we say what is the poisson ratio it is the ratio the change in y direction to the relative right change in the x direction remember this has taken place because the material is being compressed in the y direction and as a result there will be a deformation or there will be change in length in the x direction as a result of applying loading on the y direction so typically it can be uh, expressed as new or new and it is as i said ratio of stress is strain in y direction to the ratio of strain in x direction when we talked about pitavels material the value is between 0.15 to 0.50 and when we talk about unbound basis is 0.30 to 0.50 and for subgrade it is between 0.1 to 0.50 in the case of both length cement it is 0.15 other materials 
the typical value of elasticity modulus is say rubber 1000 foot 1000 to 2 million aluminium 10 million steel 30 million and the diamond is 170 million yes. typical modulus values uh, what we says for 450 410 cement 4000 aggregate treated base asphalt treated base 150 cement treated base 700 in concrete 1500 granular base 30 granular soil 15 and fine grade soil 4 typical values of asphalt uh, even is dependent on the uh, temperature asphalt 2 million at 32 degree Fahrenheit and 120 now another thing that you are going to uh, learn or going to uh, see in your literature related to stresses in flexible pavement is the deflection deflection is just a change in length as compared to strain, strain is the ratio of two length, change in length to the original length, but deflection is the only change in length. Its units are millimeters and mils, that means uh, 0.001 of inch is mils. Even the deflections are not in meters, the meters are in very low values and should be in low values. Otherwise, the pavement would have failed. So that's why we express mills, though one mill is 0 0.001 inch. Now, if you look at the system uh, of how pavement behave, we yeah, already have discussed this many a times. Let's discuss it once more. That how the stress and strains are created in flexible pavement and the rigid pavement. In the flexible pavement, there is stresses are taken care by layer, layer by layer. This asphalt concrete takes most of the stresses, then it transfer to the base and subsequently to the subject. It takes the layer system behavior. And what I mean is all layer has to carry part of the load. While we talk about the response of PCC, means there is a slab action in which the PCC slab takes all the load and it seldom transfers the load to the separate. Now, when we talk about the how to analyze a system uh, of flexible payment, what you need to know or understand is stress strain behavior within the payment structure related to the failure that is cracking and rotting. Uh, in numerically, we compute deflections and strain. And we know that different models have been developed with time. They have some capabilities, they have some assumptions, their complexity varies, and the material information is always the requirement. In an ideal model, it predicts stresses that is based on static and dynamic load and strains based on material properties, traffic and environment. Different method has been developed. Uh, the famous being is a multi-layer elastic theory, finite element method, then there is a viscoelastic theory, each time when temperature dependent behavior, uh, dynamic analysis, inertial effects, 
and thermal modulus that is the response with respect to the change. They are the most widely used. They have reasonable results, and their properties are relatively simple to. When we talk about the flexible pavement, let's assume a truck on a pavement. So whenever the truck moves, it applies or it results in this deflection and slowly but gradually as the trucks move forward, this the, the uh, stress or deflection here subsidize. So we use this method in knowing the uh, elasticity models, especially uh, for for a flexible pavement. And this is uh, one example how we do it. And actually, this is a falling weight reflectometer concept, in which from using the geophones, the dropping weight and reflection uh, basin, we get the reflection that they are reported and the stresses and strain measured and the resultant elasticity models is obtained. So when we analyze a pavement, we have different theories. One is multi-layer elastic theory in which the pavement is assumed to to have different layers and a load, a tire load is applied and there is a contact radius and this load, this, this area, this radius depends not only upon this tire pressure but upon the load as well. And that's there we can find the stress at any point within the pavement, whether it point A or point B or maybe point directly below the, at the surface or anywhere uh, at any layer. Whenever we do this, we always have to know that there is in each layer there is continuous, homogeneous, they are only continuous, they are same at any point, they are isotropic, the materials are linear elastic, we don't consider the material to the weight and every material has its own thickness except the subplate that has got correct. So when we calculate the stresses, we know that we calculate surface stresses, cause of the circular load, vertical stresses, and uniformly distributed. We assume that there is a full friction exists between two layers, and each layers are continuously subjected. So let's once again have this review that in the flexible payment stress, we calculate stress, strain, and deflections. Stress we report in PSI, strain in micro strain, and deflections in mids. Over the years, there have been different theories, and based on different theories, the stress can be calculated. First thing is the first theory is called plastic half space, in which we say no pavement exists and the load, the pavement load, the load from the tire directly transferred to the ground. And this stress at this point, at this step, Z, can be calculated using this equation. That is below the point, 
t over by one divided by the ratio of the point away from the center that is r to the depth that is r one set. So if the point is here, it means it is r distance from the center of the load and you are interested in knowing the load at stress at this point at depth C. This load, this stress will also be calculated at this point. At this distance, R will be zero. Consequently, R over Z will also be zero and you calculate the point directly this is You can see that if you have this R as zero, so that between the stress at this point will be simply 3 over 2 pi p over z square with sigma z vertical stress z is the depth and p is the point now this theory then this stresses can also be calculated either from the equation or by using Foster and solution. So what we have done is that we have imagined that whatever the load, this point load, the equivalent stress bulb will be circular in nature. The contact area will be circular that has a radius A. So a total tire will have a 2A radius, 2A radius of the diameter 2A. And if you get the slice out of that circular load, circular load, you can calculate stresses, vertical stresses, this direction, tangential stresses, and the radial stresses and last but not least is the shear stress that is on all on all the face tr z whatever result is not there but a deflection will also be there because of this load having a tire pressure of so, using this, we can calculate the stress at any of these points at depth 1a, depth 2a, point 1a from the center of the load, or point 3a on right side of the load. We can calculate on the left side at this point or any point between here or wherever at any depth you desire. Uh, there are equations that you can solve and this has been applied and you can use these equations for vertical stress t over 2 pi z r over z square if you are interested in knowing the radial stress you can use this equation tangent stress you can use this equation and here mu represent what mu represent the polar ratio between that is the ratio between strain in y direction to the strain in x direction. You can also calculate the tangential stress. The strains you calculate. If that R is equal to zero, uh, so vertical strain will be one over E sigma Z minus mu times sigma R plus T, and obviously, must be knowing that strain in each direction will be 
uh, calculated in this manner that in which the, the main strength will be because of sigma r over p while the negative effect will uh, uh, form sigma z x so the strain in other directions stress in its other direction will actually reduce the magnitude of radial stress in that particular direction and this is what is a bulk models and it is dependent upon t z r o g Now, if you assume that the stress is calculated directly below the point, that obviously R will be zero. So, all those equations, if you put R equal to zero, then you will calculate sigma z or R and T z. Similarly, at R is equal to zero, you will calculate strain in z direction as you calculate strain in radial strain. Again, all the things are known to you A is the contact pressure, then is the depth, U is the Poisson ratio. And to calculate what is the deflection, we will use this equation. And if you put Poisson ratio as 0.5, this whole test equation will you know, be used to this equation 3q times A squared. 2e a square plus z square, where u is the tire pressure, a is the contact. Uh, as you can see, using these equations are sometimes very tedious. So, Foster and Allen in 1954 has developed simple charts so that you can calculate the stresses directly. So, if you look at this chart, the charts have different uh, parameters. On x axis, it reads stress over Q into 100. The y axis, you have Z over E. And there are curves, and these curves are based on R over So, let's see that chart how the chart for calculation of vertical stress uh, is presented. Again, this is what? This is Z over A. And this is stress you calculate. And this is R over A as I will explain it here. So the upper of the curve is R over A. R over means, R over A means how much the point is away from the center of the load except upon A is the ratio of the depth of the layer to the contact radius of the chart. So Z upon A can be zero, R A, R A upon A can be but you know, if z upon a is zero, then obviously the stress will be maximum. As you know, this is a flexible pavement, and as we go below, this stress will tend to reduce. Uh, Foster and Alvinon have also presented the chart for calculating tension stress, and here this is uh, depth over radii. And then here, this is a stress, and this again R over A of the numbers, or R over A of the numbers. Shear stress can be calculated from this chart. Similarly, vertical deflection, you can use this chart for calculating. So, so whatever is the value here, uh, you input P, A, actually you get this F value. So once you get F value, you always know your tire pressure, you always know the contact radius and you know the elasticity models you can calculate.
So let's see how to do it. Let's take this example. There is a there is a point. This point away six inches away from the center of the impact load, and we are knowing this want to know we are interested to know the stress at this point. So for a given, we have been given that there is a load on the tire that is 900 pound. P is a load from the tire. Pressure is I mean the tire pressure it is 80 psi. Okay, our objective is to know the vertical stress is six inch away from the center. That is Z is equal to six and R is equal to six. Six inch away from the center is R and six inch below from the center is X. So first we want to know what is the contact radius. We know always know that the tire pressure is force upon unit area. So that's why we know this is force, this is 9000. Area is pi a square. Remember, don't get confused between R and A here. All these stresses, all this pressure, take A as a contact radius, and R is the radial distance from the point of the contact. So, actually, this area of the contact of the tire is pi a square, or you can say. They are pi into radius of the contact. So, using simple mathematics, or A is equal to 6 inches square. So, if order to know to read the chart, we need two values that is Z upon A and R upon A. Z is given to us 6 inches. A we have calculated as 6 inches as well. So, Z upon A. Similarly, the point is 6 inches away. That's R is 6, A is 6. So, Z upon A and R upon A both become equal. Now, using these values, we can calculate very simply. So, we had Z upon A is 1, so we will keep moving horizontally at z upon a1 and we try to find we want the curve find uh, try to know which curve has r upon a as one because our r upon a is one so once we find it we stop over here and once we stop we go perpendicular to this point from this curve and you find that this value that is sigma z over q into 100 here it's more than 30 now it can be 33 or it can be 32 it's difficult it's obvious it's an approximate solution and the easiest way for you to approximate is that we can always know that the point this point is not at the center so it, if it is not the center, so that's why we can safely assume this value, this value that we are going to know, falls between 30 to 35. So it's not 40. So it's between 30 to 35. And if it is between 30 to 35, the simple thing is we can take the average. So 30 and 35 it means 32.5. And for the sake of approximation, take this thing. So sigma z, we know that this value is equal to 33. Sigma z over q multiply by 100 is 33. We know q, 80. And in simple mathematics, we could know actually the vertical stress at a point 6 inch away. Six inch depth on, on load 
or for a load of 10,000 pounds or on the, or you can say on the surface of the subject. Uh, when you want to do the calculate, uh, when you want to calculate the deflection, as you, we can have two types of deflection, depends upon the type of the material. If you have a rubber tire, then the deflection is simply will be W naught 1.5 times U times A over E. E is the elasticity modulus, obviously, of flexible rubber. Q is a tire pressure and A is a quantum thickness. And if you would have been using a steel tire, then obviously the impact of the steel tire will be and you can always uh, know that this reflection for a steel blade will be more as compared to the, it will be less as compared to the rigid plate. So the rigid plate is actually 79% of the dimension of the so if you are using this rubber or you using this uh, steel as a so that is if the material is different. Another way, if uh, if the response is you are calculated on rubber, it will be different as compared to uh, the steel. It can be as no, what I am saying here is this doesn't deploy for steel tire. I am saying here that if you have a tire. That has a flexible uh, of rubber and it is based on rubber, obviously, the flexion will be less. And if there is a tire and it is uh, supported, the tire is being loaded on a steel plate that the flexion will be. So that's why, you know, the type of the pavement will have a different response. If you have been given multi-layer system and we want to know the deflection at point A using this one layer theory, we can do it like this. Though there are methods that are available for you know calculating flexible stresses uh, at multi-layer system. So let's assume that we are not using it. And for our, for us, this Z is 12 plus 8 plus 4, which is 24 inches. So if my subsurface is uh, the clay, then the deflection will be 71 mils. And if my subgrade is sand, this deflection will be. 7.1 minutes. So obviously, this is higher deflection as compared to the lower deflection because of the high elasticity modulus of the cell. So the point is the magnitude of the deflection depends on the surface on which you are applying the load and at the separate. Obviously, if you have a clay, your deflection will be more. And if you have, have a subgrade as then said, then it will be the deflection will be higher in clay as compared to the deflection in the same. So, in a nutshell, the stress is dependent on two things. The type of the pavement, whether it's a flexible plate or a rigid plate, or it also depends upon the type of the support. 
So if you have a clay as your support, then and then obviously the deflection will be higher. And if you have sand, then the deflection will be lower. So this is how deflection is calculated. The Z upon E and get this curve. Obviously, in the previous example, that was 24, 6, R over A is 0 because the point was directly above. So, we can find F. And once you find F, you know Q, you know the contact radius, and you know the lattice. So, that's how you calculate these values from the, uh, from, for this data. Now, let's see. You are talking about a multi-layer system. We always know why is there is a pavement. The pavement is to protect the subgrade, reduce stresses to tolerable level, to prevent excessive settlement of waters. The vertical stresses that is calculated on the top of the subgrade important for working, and there. These allowable stresses are dependent on the E of the separate material that we have explained. And if you want to know the combined effect, calculate the vertical strain. It is generally assumed that the stresses in radial and tangential directions are of very little values. So that's why we tend to ignore the these these parameters these inputs while we calculate the vertical strain that's why vertical strain is sigma z over e though mathematically it is not like this it is also it, mathematically it depends on stress in the radial direction and stress in the tangential direction and we Basic equation is this, but for assumptions, uh, we only calculate sigma z upon e because this is the maximum factor. This will have a subtractive effect. So even if you just neglect it, we will be getting more strain, uh, and that is uh, acceptable. Now let's see. If you are talking about the horizontal uh, tensile strain, we calculate right at the bottom of the flexible layer. So, and this is for fatigue cracking criteria. So, it also depends on overall minor principal strain and horizontal principal strain, it actually, though it's not an actual principal strain. When we talk about the overall principal strain, obviously we are talking about sigma z, x, y, z, tau x, y, tau x, z, and tau y, z. We calculate use cubic equation, stress tensor, sigma 1, sigma 2, and 3, and we can calculate the sigma e3 as 1 upon e, sigma 3 minus e, sigma 1 plus sigma 2. The horizontal principal strain, you can use this more cyclical equation as uh, this always is, uh, the basic course to have as a civil engineer at this course, and you, you know this equation from the previous knowledge. And this again is a shape strain, Px and Ey. And you can calculate this tangential as well as horizontal strain at the bottom of the S, S43. Nowadays, we have a program for gel paint or gel layer that can predict a failure, and they will be using the same equation. And if you assume that there are two layers in the system, one pavement is considered as one layer. And the subgrade is considered as thick. So that will be called a two-layer system. 
which is uh, also uh, which is right which is actually um, these assumptions these calculations are based on the model presented by the system so you can always calculate the vertical deflections and the vertical stresses and these values are dependent on the stiffness ratio e1 and e2 the graph is presented from here and there you can always find this so there are assumptions in which one layer theory that all layers could be represented as one sigma surface is sigma top of the surface but for a two-layer theory, vertical surface deflection and vertical interface deflections are different. So, for flexible pavement, this is 1.52a times e2 and f2. This f2 is calculated from the chart. e2 is the modulus of the subject. But for the rigid plane, only this coefficient has changed. Let's see if you are interested in knowing the surface deflection. Surface deflection means the point directly at the object of the chart. And like you can see this cross here. So if you are interested in knowing this deflection over here, this is called the surface deflection in which you know, so what you do? This curve are E1 over E2 curve, and here you have what? You have H1 over A. So, and if you know H1 over A, and you know E1 over E2, you can always find this F. In this example, we have H1 is 6, A is 6, so H1 upon A is 1, and then E1 is 15, E2 is 10, so it is 5. So, this go perpendicular, the center gets. You can always find this value of maximum. Uh, and for surface deflection, again, you will use this H over A as 6 over 6 is 1, R is equal to 0, and E1 over E2 is 5. So you get this value as 0 0.5. Remember, we have different chart for calculating the surface and interface deflection. We we'll use this chart for interface deflection. I mean here. Surface deflection, I mean at this point. Now if you compare If you compare surfaces versus interface deflection, you see that at the top layer it is 7% and the sub rate is 93%. And if logically you see there are no much difference between the surface and interface deflection. They are around the same. If one is you no, know, if, if one is interested in knowing the vertical stresses, he or she can use this graph. And again, you want all you know want to know is a over h one. You need a over h one. 
they go like this to set your modulus and you will always get this way. However, in this example, we have been given, we are just in knowing H1. So, what we need to know, but since sigma c is already given as to us as 8 psi, so we calculate sigma c over q, that is 8 over 80, that's 0.1. If we calculate if you also want to know this model ratio, e1 over e2, then that's 500,000 over 5,000, that comes 100. Then you go this figure, you go perpendicular to point 0.1, intersect at 100, and you get a over h1 value. And since a is known to us, you can always know how this h1, what should be the value of h1 to keep the stress in the clay. S eight Now, if you want to know the critical tensile strength at the bottom of the separate layer, you can use this charts. Remember, there is a way to read this chart. The curve going from left to right the model situation, E1 over H. The curve that are going from bottom to top represents H1 over A. So, what you need to know is you want to know E1 and E2 and you want to know H1 over A. Once you, you get this intersection value, you can find this strain factor and once the strain factor you know, you can use this relation q over e1 times f e to calculate the critical strain. Let's try to solve the given example. We have been given a contact radius of 6 inches, uh, tire pressure 80 psi, e well 200,000 psi, e2 10,000 psi. So, and we are interested in knowing the strain. Is the use going to use this chart? First, we need to calculate E1, E2, 20, and then we calculate H1 over A, 1. Now, what you are going to do? So, so, what you do? You can use start from either from left to right or right to left, uh, bottom to top, it won't matter. For example, if I want to uh, Start it like I will follow this curve of one till it intersect my desired ratio. This is two, I am not interested. I go up, this E1 over A2 is 5. Obviously, my E1 over A2 is 20. So I will follow this curve, write this point, and here I find that E1 and E2 intersect by H1 over A this one. So this is a cross and this is my intersecting point. Once I know the intersecting point, I, I'll go perpendicular and find this way. Again, it's not 1, it's not 2, but actually it is not 1.5 either. So any value between 1 and 1.5 will be this Fe. Let's assume this 1.2. Again, my, my methodology, just take average. I have reached 1.5 and 1, it will be 1.25. So, but for the sake of calculation, take this as 1.25. So, you find the value of Fe, more Q, more your E, that is 200,000. Remember, we are we will not take E in this because conceptually, that size strain is calculated at the bottom of the layer, of asphalt layer, and the value of, like, for calculating the strain, the value of elasticity models of asphalt concrete will be used. So now, we find this value of inside the strain. It's very important in the context of the papers. Let's see. 
let's move on to a three layer system. Uh, obviously, this first one is an asphalt chain. The first, the second one is an aggregate base layer. And the third one is the second. Everyone, each one of them, will have a different position. And you can calculate sigma at this interface, at this fourth place, and all the values of so all these stresses will depend upon the ratios a1, a2, a, uh, Jones has developed a chart to calculate these values. And once you know this value, you can find the relevant stresses. This is a Jones theorem, in which you know H, you know K2, you know A, and you can simply plug in the value and you will find this value of ZZ1, ZZ2, ZZ1, RR1, ZZ2, for different values of K1, K2, and But if your values are in between, then you have to interpret. Linear. So once you know the values from uh, your chart, you plug in this value to help you and use this relation to calculate stresses in Z1, Z2, radial stresses, and then the strain as you Uh, nowadays, there are different software that can be used to uh, set up those tables, obviously. So, we use those software to calculate the stresses for uh, uh, If you want to know how this software are used, Please uh, visit my YouTube uh, channel video as displayed on the slide over here, or you just can type Adnan Tadir Energy YouTube, or you can just search CanPay software, example of CanPay software, and the software can be used. So, that's it. Thank you very much for this long lecture. Inshallah, we'll be in the first week. Till then, Allah.